it going guys? Today I'm going to show you a DIY way to change your softbox light from looking like this to this. I'm a real big fan of the way that this light looks and I was able to do it with all just stuff I had laying around my studio. Alright, so for things you'll need, of course you need a softbox. I'm using a 20 inch by 28 inch softbox. I'll leave the links to everything that I'm using down below. It is pretty inexpensive. Of course, you're also going to need a light stand. And then optionally, I also am using a boom arm, which is how I got the softbox to be directly overhead. This creates a uh, pretty nice effect. For the outside frame of this grid, I am using cardboard and I actually had an old RC airplane cardboard box that I repurposed for this project. You will also need a black filming backdrop or any kind of black felt or paper. Um, I got this five foot by seven foot roll for just $13 on Amazon. You also need some gaff tape and I'm using the gaffer power gaff tape. I have a two inch and one inch roll. And then finally, you'll need some scissors, a box cutter, a Sharpie and some C47s, also known as clothespins. All right, let's get started. So I first started with cutting out the dimensions of the frame. I decided for my grid to have a width of two inches. So basically the grid will stick out two inches from the end of my softbox. So I cut the, uh, the outside frame to be two inches. Once I had all four sides completed, I decided I wanted this to have a matte black finish uh, aesthetically, but also functionally so that the light does not bounce off of this cardboard color. Um, you could either spray paint this, but I decided it'd be easiest for me to use this gaff tape that I had laying around. Alternatively, you could use black foam cardboard, uh, which in the long run would uh, make it a little bit lighter, um, but either way, this works. Next, we're gonna move on to the fabric backdrop. So I used the pieces we just created to uh, mark out the length so it was uh, all accurate and then use the straight edge to draw that line and cut it. I cut the length first and then did all of the individual pieces, each time using the same piece for my template. As you can see right here, the scissors worked quite well and they were very satisfying. Next up, I constructed the cardboard frame and conveniently, since I made this two inches and we have two inch gaff tape, this worked perfectly. Since gaff tape like this is pretty heavy duty, um, I don't think I'll have any concern of this falling apart anytime soon. Once I completed the rectangle, I checked it on the softbox and it was a perfect fit. I want it to be a snug fit, but not too tight as to uh, bend the softbox at all. I then moved on to installing the longest pieces of the softbox grid and I kind of just did this by eyeballing it and it actually turned out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I used small pieces of gaff tape on either side connecting the fabric to the edge of the frame. Now this is where the real engineering part comes in. So I knew that it was going to be a little bit of a challenge to actually get that grid shape when you have two pieces of fabric. Um, and I decided to do this method where I cut halfway into the bottom piece and then halfway going the opposite direction on the top piece. And then where they meet, um, it creates a perfect intersection. And this uh, worked really well as you can see right here. I also did all of this by eyeballing it and I would probably recommend you measure it out to be a little bit more accurate, but um, for something like this, it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Once again, I am using a small piece of gaff tape on either side to hold the edges in place. Now, as you can see right here, uh, the grid is not super tight. You'll see there's some waves um, and I knew this was going to happen. And what I figured out is when the edges are stretched to the perfect rectangular shape, uh, that then kind of evens everything out and that makes all of them more of a perfect square. I guess it doesn't really matter that everything is a perfect square, but I just wanted it to be consistent. All right, so I'm now trying on the fit of the softbox grid for the first time using those C47 clothespin clamps. As a mini side project, I decided to paint my C47s in this matte black acrylic paint, um, really just for the aesthetic. This has no functional purpose, I guess, um, and then put them back together. I think they're just a nice little touch. And here we are testing it out, and it works. Hooray. 
So the way my softbox is actually designed, which is the uh, the one in the link below, the actual diffusion part of the softbox, which is that front part you're seeing, um, it's held on by Velcro on the side. So I was pretty easily able to clip this grid onto the diffusion part next to where the Velcro meets. So it has a very sturdy hold. If you have a different style of softbox, you might have to play around with the mounting of it. And there you have it, the DIY softbox light. Special thanks to my girlfriend Anna for being the model in this video. Thank you all for watching, and as always, don't forget to keep it pro.